Okay, so I've introduced you to buffered solutions. Now we're going to do some problems. And I'm also going to introduce you to a shortcut way, which a lot of people like. I tend to go back to the, the ICE method, but some people like it. So we're going to do it each problem twice using both methods a couple of times. So you can decide which one you like the best for yourself. You can't always use Henderson-Hasselbeck, but it does come in handy. And I believe it's on your equation sheet. All right, so buffered solutions, we have said, are a solution that resists a change in the pH when either hydrogen or hydroxide are added. A buffered solution is composed of a weak acid or a base and its salt. And so you get, consequently, you get the common ion effect. So calculations involving buffered solutions contain weak acids or bases. So the first thing to remember is that buffered solutions are simply solutions of weak acids or bases containing a common ion that affects equilibrium. So it's going to shift it to the left or shift it to the right. The pH calculations are the same as in Chapter 14. What do I mean by that? I mean ice, ice, baby. So if you remember how to do ice problems, we're good. And then I'll also teach you a shortcut way called henderson Hasselbeck. And you're welcome to use whichever one you want. Please make sure you show your work. All right, so here's an example. We did a similar problem before. A buffer solution contains 0.5 molarity acetic acid and 0.5 molary acetate. Calculate the pH of the solution. All right, so the first thing we're going to consider is doing it the old way, which would be ice. And um, acetic acid is an acid, so that makes it easy. So there's your acetic acid, which, by the way, you need to remember is H, uh, C2, H3O2. And You've got sodium acetate, which actually is not that important. It's the acetate ion that's there. So we're going to set up our Henderson. Uh, we're going to use ice for the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the, the equation. HC2H3O2 is going that way. And I'm going to make H plus plus C2H3O2 negative 1. Uh, you can assume a 1 liter concentration, so that means your molarity is your concentration. I have 0 0.50 molarity of that. I don't know what this is. I'm going to say it's x, and uh, sorry, it's uh, 0, and I have 0 0.50 molarity of that. All right, because they told me I have the same of, of both. Now, this is going to go down by x, this is going to go up by x, and this is going to go up by x. So this is my initial, my change, and now I'm going to get my equilibrium. So I'm going to get 0 0.50 molarity minus x. This is going to be x, and this is 0 0.50 plus x. All right, so now we need to do the math, and we do have the Ka for this. Uh, if you check your notes, it says there it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's go on and do that one. All right, so um, we're going to um, plug it in. One point, oops, didn't mean to do that. That's uh, right on there. Okay, so we're going to do uh, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth uh, equals, uh, we've got our x times our 0.5 plus x over our 0.5 minus x. I think you kind of know where this is going. And uh, these basically cancel each other out because they're the same number. And our x equals that. And now we're going to plug it into our minus log is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that will give us our pH. So go ahead and do that, pause it for a second, and see what you get. And that should bring you to the end of page one. All right, so if you've done that, you've probably figured out that uh, that is the pH, and it's a slightly acidic solution. And if you're still having trouble, make sure you read 15.2 uh, over again, because that's what I'm doing these problems from. And they do match the ones in your textbook. So if you are not sure about the work or you want to read it again, just look at that. All right.
So now what happens if this is if you have the a weak acid with a common ion? Well let's what happens if they mess with you and they say, hey, we're going to give you a strong acid or a strong base and adding it to the buffer solution. And the best way to deal with that is you know that the strong acid is going to force a reaction and it's the big bully in town. So it's going to wipe out a bunch of stuff and you're going to have to put that into the ice concentration. So first take care of the strong acid or strong base and then after that, do the stoichiometry calculations and do the ice and then you should be able to figure out the pH. All right, so what am I talking about? Adding a strong acid to a strong base, do the stoichiometry first. A strong base will grab the protons from the weak acid reducing the HA concentration or a strong acid will add the proton to the anion of the salt, uh, reducing the A negative concentration. Either way, Le Chatelier's will come into play and it's going to mess with your problem. Okay, and then once you've dealt with that, you do the equilibrium problem. So these are a little harder because they're basically two problems the strong acid, strong base problem, and then the ice equilibrium problem. All right, so here's a problem What is the pH of one liter of the previous solution? when 0 0.01 molarity of solid NaOH is added. A buffered solution contains 0.5 molarity acetic acid and 0.5 molarity sodium acetate. So we now have to deal with the strong base. Okay, so basically what they've added is this OH negative. And how will that shift the equilibrium if you add OH negative? Well, what's the OH going to do? In your previous uh, problem, you have hydrogen, hydrofluoric, sorry, not hydrofluoric, I don't know why I said that, acetic. Uh, you have acetic acid, C2H3O2-1, uh, becoming H plus, plus c 2 h 302 negative 1. So what's going to happen when you add this uh, strong base? It's going to um, change the concentration that you have and get rid of, it's going to add to, this right here is going to force the acid to react. So I'm going to do that in, in blue Let's do that in blue. Purple. Purple will be good. All right. So every time you add OH negative, it's going to force that to break apart, and it's going to give you more of this. And what happens to that? Well, this goes together with that, so you get water, and then you get more of that. So that's going to change your concentration. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out how much of this just got added when you added this right here. And you can assume it's one liter, so the molarity of that is the same. So I'm going to do that math next. All right, so um, what's going to happen is I'm going to, I had 0. oops, excuse me, hit the wrong thing. That always happens. Um, I had 0 0.50 uh, moles in one liter of the C2H3O2-1. And this right here uh, forced that many moles of the acetic acid to break apart. So what I also got when I did that on the previous slide, is I also got 0 0.01 moles of C2H3O2, negative 1. So I have a total of 0 0.51 moles of it when I'm starting. And on the other hand, what I, when I thought I had uh, 0 0.50 molarity or moles per liter of the H, C2H3O2, 
Remember, some of that reacted. So I went down by 0 0.01 molarity. So now I have only 0.49 molarity of the acid, and I have 0.5 moles of the acetate. So now I have to do the math slightly differently, so it's going to affect it. So let's, let's go back to our other equation, which was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals my hydrogen concentration, which I still don't know. Uh, so I took care of my strong acid, and now I'm going to do my equilibrium. Instead of having 0.5, I have 0.51 molarity plus x, and then on the bottom I have only 0.49 uh, molarity minus x. So basically this time they don't cancel out. But I do know this is basically zero and this is basically zero. So I'd like you to pause it for a minute and figure out the hydrogen concentration. Okay, so hopefully you've done that and you got that the hydrogen concentration is equal to 1.76 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity and go ahead and plug that in and get the pH. Again, pause it for just a second and get the pH. Okay, and hopefully you did that and you got the following answers, that your pH is 4.76. Now, that's because you added a strong um, base to this and um, you can also look this up in your book, and uh, that's the first half of the lecture on chapter 15.8.